An NBA player had guns in the locker room? Let's find out. Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the top 8 worst players in NBA history. So without any delay, let's get right into it. Coming in at number 9, we have Gorgie Diang. After showing continued improvement over his first three years in Minnesota, Diang played his way into the Timberwolves' starting lineup during the second half of the 2015 to 2016 season and peaked with his best numbers in 2016 to 2017, just in time to land a new four-year contract for a whopping $64 million. And yet, it's funny how he hasn't been the same player ever since. The former first-round draft pick out of Louisville in 2013 has quickly declined, returning to a reserve role behind Carl Anthony Towns and Taj Gibson. At 5.7 points and 4.1 rebounds a game, Diang should enjoy what he's making now because we won't doubt that he'll ever see that kind of money again from another team. Coming in at number 8, we have Pete Chilcutt. Over a standout college career at UNC under Dean Smith, Pete Chilcutt forged his reputation on a clutch shooting stroke. That shot, however, only took him so far during a 9-year NBA career, while Chilcutt's lack of athleticism became a rather pesky problem. He bounced around 7 NBA teams and even won a title with the 1995 Houston Rockets, but the lanky power forward never averaged more than 6.1 points. Even his shooting stroke didn't quite translate to the pro game as he finished his career with only 38.1 field goal percentage from deep. Up next, we have Nikolos Sidishviki. No one better exemplified the league's fascination with mysterious incoming overseas talent than Georgia's Nikolos Tsidishviki. He was advertised as a 7-foot athletic stretch 4 when he was selected 5th overall by the Nuggets in the 2002 draft. Reporters suggested that Nuggets' front office has never actually seen him play, and it's not as though his 6.6 .6 and 1.8 rebounds in 11 games with Benton and Treviso would have prompted a top 5 pick. We will never really know what all the fuss is about, particularly in light of Tsidishviki's career average of 2.9 points per game. Up next, we have Chris Gent. By some measures, Chris Gent can be considered one of the most successful players to ever set foot in the NBA. Consider his career in comparison to current NBA star Rudy Gay. Gent's NBA career spanned two years and included 37 total points, a plateau that Gay has exceeded four times over the course of a single game, and yet Gent has 11 postseason appearances in his resume, compared to just seven appearances in nine NBA seasons for Gay. Remarkably, Gent played nearly twice as many playoff games as regular season games in a highly forgettable career. Up next, we have Keith Kloss. Odds are, if you're 7'3 and athletic, you're going to get a shot at the NBA. And if you're Keith Kloss, even a crippling, long-standing alcohol problem wasn't going to stand in the way of a three-year NBA career with the Los Angeles Clippers that included a five-year, $8.5 million contract with the team. Kloss's unspectacular 130-game NBA imprint was made more notably by a checked-off court history that included three DUIs and multiple clashes with Clippers coaches. Most notoriously, Kloss was the subject of a viral video in which he is seen being beat up by a mob of people. Coming in the number four spot, we have Michael Ruffin. In the second season of his nine-year NBA career, Michael Ruffin averaged 2.6 points and 5.8 rebounds. Little did he know at the time that those numbers would go on to be the best that he could have hoped for, as he settled into a primarily defensive role. Even so, Ruffin managed the rare and highly dubious achievement of wrapping up his career with more career personal fouls than total points. Credit Ruffin for continuing to forge on and find consistent employment, even though his everlasting legacy is probably being in the background of posters of better players. Lefty 6'9 ball handling with two guards don't come along every day. So the Los Angeles Lakers figured that it might be worth using a second round pick on Chinese import Sun Yu in the 2008 draft. After looking somewhat competent in a short D-League stint, the Lakers offered Yu a platform to see what he could do for the purple and gold at the NBA level. But it didn't go well. Following a debut in which he collected four fouls and two turnovers in just five minutes, you would go on to accumulate more fouls than points, and as many turnovers as assists and steals combined. Ten games were all it took for the Lakers to realize that you simply just wasn't an NBA player. Coming in at number two, we have Cherokee Parks. Oh, to be an agent for the oddly named Cherokee Parks who somehow leveraged respectable college numbers at Duke into an NBA career spread across nine seasons, including seven teams, this, despite an offensive game that saw him top out at 6.3 points per contest and a defensive game that saw him consistently beaten in the post by faster, stronger, and larger players. Coming in at number one, we have Javaris Crittenton. Pick one was allegedly the threat made to Javaris Crittenton by teammate Gilbert Arenas in the locker room of the Washington Wizards. The presence of guns in the locker room breached just about every player code the league had to offer and brought a swift end to Crittenton's nondescript NBA career. 
The 2007 first rounder made it to three different teams in two seasons before the Washington incident. Well guys, that's it for today. Let us know about some of your least favorite NBA players down in the comment section, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.